Hi, this is Jeff Walker. I'm here this morning with my good friend George Bedell, MBE. He's uh, just two months past his 80th birthday, believe it or not. And he's here to tell us about his life in labour. Um, when did you first join the party, George, and why? Well, I'm not sure exactly when. I know that it was round about 1966, 67. Uh, I was on the, uh, I was at Newcastle University doing a diploma in Advanced Educational Studies, which was a degree equivalent. Because them days, um, there wasn't a B.Ed. And um, being particularly interested in education, I joined that three year course, uh, which convinced me that I should join the Labour Party. Can you recollect your first impressions of meetings of the Labour Party, George? I um, Do you mean, Jeff, at a ward level or CLP? Both, really. Both. Hmm. Well, first of all, when I joined the Labour Party, I used to attend the ward meetings, and they took place once a month, uh, in alternative months, uh, between Shiny Road Junior School and a primary school or junior school in Henshaw. And they were well attended. Uh, but I was told when I went the first meeting that since I was a new member, I wouldn't be allowed to vote on any issue for two years. So I said to the chairman in uh, as forthright a manner as possible, that if it had paid me money, therefore I was part of the club, therefore I should be allowed to vote. Anyway, eventually it was reconciled and I was allowed to vote. At CLP level, uh, that took place at Hetton in a school there, and it was extremely well attended. Uh, you know, there'd be a, at least 50, 60 delegates there at a CLP meeting. And uh, the meetings were really lively and vibrant and explorative and my kind of meetings. By my reckoning, that's almost 50 years in the Labour Party. Um, so... How do you think the party has changed over those 50 years of membership? Well, for a while, for a good while, you've got to remember, Jeff, that I, I wasn't allowed, when I lived in Sunderland, I wasn't allowed by the MP, Mr Mullen, to attend the uh, ward meetings there, or for that matter, the constituency party meetings, <coughs> because I was chairman of Sunderland Health Authority. And uh, so, uh, for a, quite a long time, I wasn't active in the party. Mullen decided that because I was working for Mrs. Thatcher, that I shouldn't be allowed to attend. So I was out of the game for some years. Uh, it's changed dramatically in my book uh, by the neutering of the Constituency Labour Party. That was the vibrant, to me, the vibrant heart of democracy. And as I said, uh, Horton, Labour, uh, Horton Constituency Labour Party was extremely lively and interesting. And there was huge debates on the poll tax and the miners' strike. It was amazing. And it was very radical. And now my observations are that it's as dead as a dodo. And what do you think has changed to make it as dead as a dodo, George? Well, the fact that It's top down. There's no bottom up. What we have now is a system 
which is insulting really to any active member of the Labour Party, uh, in as much as uh, when I attend the odd CLP meeting, because I'm not a delegate, I'm appalled at the mundane way that it operates now compared to the years before Blair, Brown and Mandelson and New Labour because it was New Labour who were afraid of the CLPs who needed, from their perspective anyway, to reduce the power of the CLPs and the reduction of that power reduced dramatically the involvement of ordinary Labour Party members. Have you ever stood as a candidate for the local government elections, George? <laughs> oh, I did, Jeff. I'm what you call a three-time loser. Three times I stood uh, to seek the nomination, and each time, each time, I was beaten by one vote. It was quite remarkable. And a few months before I, uh, he died, I ran into Bill McKinley, who will you who, who you'll recall was secretary of the ward, secretary of the Constituency Labour Party as well. The wily jock, we used to call him. I met him in Washington in a shopping centre. And we went for a coffee and he explained to me how they used to fill the vote to ensure that I always lost by one. So after that, I wouldn't, I never ever sought the nomination again. So after all these experiences, George, what do you like or dislike about the way the party operates at the moment? Uh, well, I think I've essentially pushed that one, Jeff, when I talked about the CLP. Uh, because as a political education officer for Shining Road, I prepare stuff, I bring it to the ward. We, there's only 12 or so people get there. But there's often really constructive and um, superb debates on issues, but they never go anywhere. <laughs> Essentially, uh, you can uh, very often shiny reward is moved that these ideas should go to the constituency Labour Party, but as far as I can see, we've never had a anything adopted or sent up to headquarters, wherever that might be, but it's certainly a very, very hierarchical structure. Of course, we're in the middle of a, uh, the hustings for a new Labour leader. Where do you see the party going in the future, George? Well, it's a, <laughs> that's, a that's a hard one to forecast. I think that um, the the best thing about this uh, Labour leader election is the fact that Corbyn has brought a new dimension to the discussion. And that's good, really good. Um, I'm not sure at all where it would go if Corbyn became the leader. Principally because, although many of the things I've observed him delivering in public meetings and he's written in the Guardian and places like that, many of the, his ideas I run with. However, marshalled against him is all of the Tory press, almost certainly Sky News and anything to do with Sky because the owner of Sky, of course, is a rank um, right-wing Tory. And all of the, all the media would be marshalled against him. So I'm not sure even how he would operate. It reminds me of when Michael Foote was leader. That's the parallel I draw. And, uh, 
the hall of the press, the TV, the media generally uh, were used to beat the guy up at every opportunity. And I think that would happen if Corbyn got a leadership. My view would be that Michael Foote is considerably more left wing than Jeremy Corbyn, do you? <laughs> I've no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great, George. Uh, the reason I call this My Life in Labour is simply because when I was thinking about it, maybe you've spent 50 years being pre pregnant and not actually given birth to anything. Is that how it feels sometimes? Uh, wait, all the time. Uh, <laughs> I think that the, it's, a, it's a, quite a, a good title, really, because when I look back, I know I've been active. I was for a number of years, political education officer for the constituency Labour Party, and for many years uh, the same in the ward, and been very active over them many years, apart from the time when Mullen denied me access. Um, there's very little changed, except it's become less democratic. And you know, Jeff. I joined the Labour Party essentially because I was looking for a meritocracy. I was looking for a world whereby people were measured for their performance, for their ideas, for their values, and the, the quality of their thoughts and processes to implement. Nothing could be further than the truth. I remember some years ago, our last MP, Fraser Kemp, was seeking the nomination and he came here to Fletcher Crescent. So that would be around about 20 years ago. Anyway, I made him a cup of coffee and I said to him, Now then, Fraser, to get my vote, tell me about what New Labour's big idea is. And he said, Well, Tony Blair and New Labour are intent on building a meritocracy. Well, I was very rude, Jeff. I fell about with laughter. And I, he left in disgust. He didn't even finish his coffee. But as, in hindsight, I was absolutely spot on. As soon as Tony became Prime Minister, he appointed all his mates in strong positions, no matter what their merit was. So, that's the sad observation I have. Well, let's hope that Jeremy Corbyn's right when he says these hustings are different because it's opened up the debate and whatever happens in the Labour leadership, things have changed. Yeah, thank you.